but we need business. The Grammys aren't about what you expect. They're about everything you don't. That's right. We've seen a whole lot of surprises from the Grammys over the years. Can we please start it again? I'm sorry. I can't mess this up. So why would this Sunday be any different? Get ready, because the first thing you need to know about this year's show, who's hosting? How you feel? Felicia Keys is back to host for a second year in a row. After her debut last year, the 15-time Grammy winner will now be the first female music star to host the show twice. And while Alicia Keys returns, a lot of this year's performers will hit the Grammy stage for the very first time. Billie Eilish, Lizzo, Tyler the Creator, and Rosalia are all making their Grammy stage debuts. And delivering their very first Grammy performance together, Lovebirds and the voice coaches Blake Shelton and Gwen Stefani. Meanwhile, we'll see returning performances by Camila Cabello, the Jonas Brothers, Demi Lovato, and Aerosmith, who will be performing a medley of their biggest hits. And if those performances sound exciting, wait till you hear about the night's biggest nominees. Lizzo's at the head of the pack with eight total nominations, including four of the biggest categories, Record of the Year, Album of the Year, Song of the Year, and Best New Artist. She's followed by Lil Nas X and Billie Eilish, who scored six noms each, with Billie actually competing with Lizzo in those same four main categories. And right behind them, Billie Eilish's brother Phineas O'Connell, singer and songwriter Her, and Ariana Grande with five noms each. Music's biggest night is here, and now you're all set for it, thanks to the hot list. The list is on. A new puppy's exciting, but you need to know three things before bringing the small ball of fur into your home. But first... It's not so much as specific as what's seasonal. That's what's most important. Tricks for arranging a showpiece charcuterie board with ideas for the perfect pairings on this savory platter. That's at the top of our list right now. Hey everyone, I'm Shaguna Dulo. These days, you can't walk into a bar, excuse me, gastro pub, without seeing a charcuterie board. They can set an elegant tone and they can cost a fortune, but they don't have to. Heidi Fogelsong has charcuterie on the cheap, and that's our featured story on the top of the list. Meats, cheeses, fruits, the staples of a charming charcuterie board. We all know that this pretty platter is party magic, but not always that simple to make. I love seeing a board when I deliver it, when it looks beautiful, and I honestly love seeing it after it's been demolished. We spoke to Linda Hopkins, owner of Harmony Boards in Phoenix, Arizona, who shares three tips for assembling the perfect charcuterie board for your party guests. First, the cheese sets the tone. So you want to make sure you have a soft cheese, like this fromage pavé here, or a brie, and you can do one or two of those, and then you need two or three of the harder or semi-hard cheese, like here we have some manchego and a Toscano and a cheddar. Cheese for a charcuterie board can get pricey, but there are ways to slice down on the expense, just not the quality taste. You can go to Whole Foods and go in their $5 less section. They have little ends and bits, so you can get a good mix of cheeses there. And if you're a party goer who tends to snag the cheese first, don't forget your manners. When you cut cheese to serve yourself, for instance, from this brie, you want to cut along so you can keep the shape. Linda says that cutting the tip off a wedge of cheese is bad etiquette. Next, charcuterie board meat techniques takes the board to the next level. And then with prosciutto, you also, this isn't very pretty on its own, just laying on the board flat like this. And I pull off the paper that separates the slices. And then I just, again, kind of make a ribbon with it, fold it up on itself. And then I take a little paring knife and slice it in half and I fan it out as I put it on the board. The fan technique also works for salami. To fold it in half and then quarter, half and then quarter, and then go every other direction with your fold. Then when you put them on the board, they just kind of flower out. Lastly, the sides bring the charcuterie board all together. Accoutrements is what we call them. So that could be the chocolates, the pickles, nuts, fruit, even vegetables. Set the tone for your board with sides that are in season. So you want to make sure everything is seasonal. The board looks better that way. I mean, if you have a fall board with persimmons and pears and apples, that makes sense. Whereas a summer board is going to be berries. And before your guests arrive, make sure you refrigerate it until about a half an hour before you serve it. Then you want to take it out 
out so the cheese can come to temperature, but don't take it out two hours ahead because it really should only sit out for about two hours total. We're elevating your hosting skills with the ultimate charcuterie board at the top of the list. All right, now it's time for a few stories that are full of heart. Today, Jimmy Rhodes has What's Trending. Jimmy. Thanks, Shagoon. So today it's all about an upcoming holiday filled with love. We're talking Valentine's Day, of course, and turns out Cupid Top Santa. That's first on our list of what's trending. Valentine's is here. All right, that guy looks a bit horrified about Valentine's Day, but that's not the case with most folks. A new study on behalf of e-commerce company Zulily found 81% of people get excited about February 14th, while only 68% get excited for Christmas. And a third of folks are so stoked for the romantic holiday that they ditch work to celebrate. When you feel love, share love. Of course, with Valentine's Day comes pressure to plan the perfect date, so why not have it at the world's most romantic building? That's at number two. The Art Deco designed Empire State Building is one of the most impressive and endearing skyscrapers ever created. The view from the 102nd floor is as breathtaking today as it was when it first opened in 1931. And folks can enjoy that heart-pounding view on Valentine's Day. In past years, couples could win a wedding atop the New York landmark, but this year the skyscraper wanted to give folks, married or not, a different way to celebrate their love. The building, along with iHeartMedia, is giving a pair of lovebirds the ultimate V-Day date, which includes a tour of the iconic landmark, along with a three-course meal in their own private area on the 86th floor observatory. Known as one of the most iconic and romantic buildings in the world, proposals are a frequent occurrence here at the heart of New York. And bonus, airfare and accommodations are included. To enter, you gotta share your love story. For all the details, check out lightfm.com. And the romantic holiday just wouldn't be complete without a thoughtful present. A gift for your love bug is at number three. There's a reason half-eaten chocolate isn't on anyone's wish list. This Valentine's Day, name a roach. Yeah, ditch the chocolates this year and opt for a Valentine's Day roach from the Bronx Zoo. For 15 bucks, you can name a Madagascar hissing cockroach after a loved one or an ex. And they'll get a certificate via email letting them know just how thoughtful you are. This Valentine's Day, words aren't enough because flowers wilt and candlelight fades, but roaches are forever. And you can snag hissworthy swag too, like a roach candle or roach socks. Booking a room at the Roach Motel, that's your call, but they probably have bed bugs. If that candle and those socks are must-have gifts for Cupid's holiday, you gotta order them by February 4th on bronxzoo.com slash roach. That's what's trending. Welcome back. As a new dad, I knew there'd be diapers and bottles and more diapers, but it turns out there's a lot of high-tech stuff to make a parent's life a little easier. Christina Guerrero has the latest high-tech baby gear. We love our tech because it makes life a little easier and sometimes <laughs> easier is exactly what we need. So we found some baby tech that will take the tears out of parenthood. Starting with the Baby Bretza Formula Pro Advanced. It's like a Keurig for baby bottles. Tired of spending hours making bottles? Measuring, pouring, shaking, warming to get the perfect bottle can be tedious, but this little time saver does it for you. Fill the water and formula containers and pop your bottle under the spout. Just push the button and Formula Pro Advanced automatically mixes formula and water. This bit of convenience runs $199. Next on our list, the 4Moms Mama Roof 4. This nifty piece of tech isn't your typical baby swing. It's got five different motions designed to replicate the motions a parent makes when they're soothing a baby. This was a favorite of my little guy when he was just a wee babe, and like my kid, the Mama Roo has new features. Now you can rock a by that baby with the 4Moms app. Select the motion that works for your baby right from your phone. The upgraded Mama Roo 4 is $219. Finally, let's send baby off to dreamland with the Snoo Smart Sleeper from The Happiest Baby. Ask any new parent and they'll tell you, exhaustion is their number one stress. Thanks for making coffee, huh? I didn't make coffee. Hello? 
Yes, that is a scene all too familiar with parents. So Dr. Harvey Karp, author of Happiest Baby on the Block, invented a crib that could help parents and babies get some much needed rest. It's wound-like sensations add an hour or more to a baby's sleep. And when he hears crying, Snoo automatically chooses the best white noise and jiggly motion. Now it's gonna cost you your firstborn. Kidding, but really it runs $1,295. But you can also rent one for 112 bucks a month. Tech that'll let you and the little ones sleep like babies, priceless. Technology is great, but being a parent means you gotta be fit, not just physically, but mentally. Teresa Strasser found three gyms that don't just build your body, they buff your brain. They're on the buzz list. Teresa. Thanks, Shagoon. Here are a few gyms that are helping bodies and minds. Coming in at number one, Addiction Recovery CrossFit. The Barbell Saves Project is a nonprofit that offers free classes for people recovering from drug and alcohol addiction. Its creator, Robert Best, introduced the classes at his Phoenix, Arizona gym, CrossFit Uru, since hitting the gym helped him get sober seven years ago. At the beginning of each class, you know, we gather in a circle, we introduce ourselves, we do an emotional check-in so we go around the circle everybody in a word or two kind of says where they're at at their emotional state right now we take them through the workout we get back together as a group again we put that out there so now how do you guys feel I feel good just knowing programs like that exist next Centennial Colorado's mind gym is a place where people participate in talk therapy with a counselor meditation or neurofeedback brain training clients say the gym trips help with sleep quality and symptom management for things like pain, ADHD, anxiety, and PTSD. I was sleeping maybe two to four hours, and that had been going on for the last two years. That first session, I slept for almost five hours. And beyond improving sleep, the clients say the brain training gives them a bonus benefit, hope. And the third unique gym, working out more than your body, Littleton, Colorado's 212 Degrees Fitness, a fitness center that's helping those with Parkinson's fight the disease. Literally, Delisa Novak leads the Parkinson's Power Boxing class and makes it available for free for Parkinson's patients and their families. I've had several members of my family be diagnosed with Parkinson's disease. The boxing aspect of it has really helped with coordination, balance, footwork. You're reinforced the connections in your brain that might have been weakened by Parkinson's. And these two Parkinson's patients, they noticed the difference. My neurologist, when I saw him, he told me whatever I was doing to keep doing it. Yeah. Whatever it is, it's working. It's just fun to be around other people with the same problem. Talk about giving Parkinson's a one-two punch, reshaping the way you think about gyms on the buzz list. And hey, lots more of the list is still to come, so stay with us. Welcome back, folks. Sure, puppies are cuddly and cute, but make no mistake, that fuzzball will turn your life upside down. We want your house and your pet to be safe, so check out this guide to puppy proofing. Let's be honest, there's really nothing sweeter than a cute little puppy. But while you may be ready to take one home, your home might not be. Anything possible will go into your puppy's mouth. So you'll have to puppy proof your home. And Michael Moorfield from the Arizona Animal Welfare League says the first step is to know what common house plants are toxic. Michael, tell me about house plants and what are the steps that you're supposed to take? Going through some sort of toxicity issue or an emergency room visit, it's not worth a beautiful plant. Like this very common pothos plant, also known as devil's ivy. It can cause severe pain, difficulty swallowing, and even death. Lilies can be dangerous for dogs. Aloe can be dangerous to dogs as well. That can make them really sick to their stomachs. But if they do turn your houseplants into a salad bar, go to a vet as soon as possible. They're going to get you in touch with the National Poison Call Center, and they will talk you through the toxicity issues. They will talk to your vet about what the next steps are. Puppy proofing is a lot like baby proofing when it comes to locking up cabinets and doors. A lot of the things that you can buy to baby proof your house can be done by anybody with a screwdriver, including automatic door closers so that your dog doesn't try and escape out your front door or get into a room they're not supposed to. Definitely any side doors that lead into the backyard or your bathrooms. There are medications that may fall on the ground. And for the cabinets. Putting little latches on all of your cabinets. There's a lot of really bad stuff in those cabinets down the bottom, chemicals, or even higher up when they get bigger 
bigger trying to get into your food or into your trash can, so make sure it's strong enough to keep them out. That's especially true for the pantry. You need to know what human foods are toxic to dogs. There are some peanut butters out there that contain xylitol. It's a sweetener also found in some toothpaste, jello, gum, and other things with artificial sugar. It is very toxic to dogs, especially puppies. You have to avoid things like onions, fatty foods, grapes, raisins, avocados. They can cause things like seizures, anemia, or even death. Check out the ASPCA's list of toxic foods on their website. Now your house is as ready as you are to welcome your fur baby home. Those are all great tips, and if you don't want to take on puppyhood, know that there are millions of adult dogs out there that need homes.